If you would like to get your song reviewed, dear listener, there's the filthy capitalist option. It's so already says. 125 gets you straight to the head of the line. You don't have to be a part of the alliance. You don't have to be a part of the group. Wait a minute. And the biggest thing is you don't have to wait. You hop, skip, and jump right in front of everybody. 125 gets you there. You do that three times and then get mashed down to the $75 rate for perpetuity. Yes! Also, there is a band review option. <laughs> so if you've got a band and you're trying to get your band some exposure, hit me up at sorry at gmail.com and I'll show you the details about how to pull you that off. You can also jump on Patreon and there is a option on the tiers to be able to get your band reviewed. Yep. Obviously, we can't lie to you. So we can't guarantee, can't guarantee a positive a review. Positive. Get what you get. It's just rubbish. 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 That's British for garbage. Ah! My favorite is the community option. One dollar at the gate gets you in at Patreon. You get to join an alliance. The alliance joins their points together, and that helps determine what songs that we do. The alliances hang out on Discord. Message me on Patreon to get the link. And they do all kinds of other cool things. They do Minecraft. What? Dungeons and Dragons. Yeah, yeah. It's really a community within the community. Anybody can go on the village, facebook.com backslash Vin and Sorry. There's 160 plus thousand people on the channel. What's cool about the Discord is that it offers a real opportunity for community connection, friendship, that type of thing. But, and uh, it's on Discord, so if you're not a Facebook person, it's for you. You start off at a dollar. Right. Plus you get exclusives. Sorry and I are working on a song. So the first 15 seconds of that was on Patreon. Also, at $15 tier and above, when we actually debut the video, they're going to be there live with us. There you are, dear listener. Buy our merch. Buy our merch, indeed. It shall, shall lead them to buy our merch. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Yes, dear listener. Uh, we are in the midst of our MF Doom deep dive. And I got to tell you guys, I was... I was pensive about this uh, this, this uh, segment because I grew up with rap, I grew up with it, with hip hop, so I'm like, yo, if this dude is trash, I'm gonna have to say he's trash, and I know that these people really like him, but I grew up in hip hop, so I was kind of like, yo, these are these are people that are not from my subculture, and they really like this dude, so is he gonna be like a legit rapper? A lot of prejudice in there, blah, blah, blah. I agree, but I'm telling you the truth. That's what was going through my head. But I got to tell you, I am really, really feeling this dude. And the only reason so far that I could put together for why I wasn't a big MF Doom fan as a hip hop head was because I basically left hip hop as he was ascending. I discovered Korn in 1999. He had his first record out in 99. There you go. Um, so yeah, I've been really, really feeling this dude, man. It's been weird. It's been a weird experience because I, I, I really didn't know. Um, uh, what's the next song? You don't want to do that. Where, where is it? Is it there? Oh, well, she probably sent it to the main one because I don't think she has this one. Uh, okay. <clears throat> right there. So, <clears throat> A friend of, okay, so Pony, obviously, you guys all know Pony. She has a friend named Robin who is going through college right now. You see that? Can you just, how are we going to do that? Post it in the comment section? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I am going to add the GoFundMe to both streams in the, in the little video descriptions and also on the screen itself and if anybody wants to help donate toward her um her school projects that would be awesome like i think it's her college that it is for specifically here's the gofundme i'm posting it in both spots um but she anything helps like i know some people feel like if i give a dollar like that's just weird it's really not weird like every dollar is helpful and if you know if a bunch of people give a dollar like that adds up so don't feel like that a dollar is like a waste of time like whatever whatever you can get i'm sure that she's going to be grateful for because school bills are just ridiculous and uh i don't know i think it's a cool way like where she said it's for uh her friend is in uh indigenous i think it's a cool way f to even recognize like the things that have happened in this country against those people and say hey you know what like i'm gonna do something to help out and this is a way that we can help out because that's what we do dear okay listener. so she lacks 613 dollars to get her through the next set of classes 
So she's trying to get six hundred and thirteen dollars. All right, guys. Uh, having said that, let's jump into the next song. Okay, which so is... the next song is Danger Doom, El Chupa Nimbre. Uh, this is one from the 2005... El Chupa Nibre. What is uh, a Nibre? 2005 collaboration album between Doom and famed producer Danger Mouse. Released under the artist name Danger Doom... Instead of the usual dialogue snippets from old Fantastic Four cartoons, this album features voiceover work from a variety of adult swim shows like Aqua Teen, Hunger Force, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast, and what? Sea Lab 2020. Aqua Teen, Hunger Force? No way! Okay, guys, here we go. Here we go, guys. Let's do it. Uh, this is... The name of the song is what again? El Chupa Nambre, Nimbre. El Chupanibre, okay. This should be interesting. Uh, this is Danger Doom, which would be Danger Mouse and MF Doom together. Let's do it, folks! Adult Swim presents Danger Doom. And what else? Why did you buy this album? I don't know why you did. You're stupid. <laughs> Yourself. Ha ha ha. Super flow with more jokes than Bazooka Joe A mix between Superfly Snooker and a Super Ho True a MC like El Trooper Nibre Digest a group and sell the poop on eBay Danger with the best screaming shoot the DJ Doom clicking over two chickens three way Four in the five, a cork on the freeway Villain find a way to make him pay whatever we say State your intentions I really love your tape but I hate your inventions Very well, what you want a brownie? He took off the mask and whispered Put me where you found me Kept his paper digits in a chunk Once joined a rap click, midgets into crunk Did a solo on the oboe Could've sold a million, then the villain went for dolo And cited creative differences Basically they hated, he left no jaded witnesses Rappers suck when they spit, I doubt them The crap they sing about, you wanna slap the fucking shit out of Time waits for no man On a blind date, a lover with a slow chrome hand Judge them by his shoes, hot smelly brogan Buzz them with the news, call them pot belly Conan no prick barbarian, a strict baritarian, a sick pair of merry men The beat is like a swift kick in the rear end The stiff <laughs> made her lose the lipstick and hairpin He said, jam, act like you know me Even with the mask on, show me what you owe me Tell her brush a grill and wash her face and at home man. Do my leg got like and you wash a got cool go, man. What we have here is a failure to communicate If you're gonna hate, might at least get your rumors straight about doing the great A lot more confident, came a long way since the days we had the rhyme for rent It was time well spent, vented, spelt, dented Hell bent it and heaven sent it. A wire is dead, he's in it for the cash flow. Like to send a big up the fire ahead lazo. Let a brother know once you lasso Hasbro. So when he come with Destro, he gets no hassle. Could hardly get a word in and wondered what the damage is to retain Harvey Birdman. dude out man okay what is it what did you figure out he because he's in new york city listening to wu-tang and rock definitely i see a lot of rock him influence but he was born in london and his mother was trinidad trinidadian i don't know what his dad was i think his dad was british but his so he, he was born in London. His mother was a Trini, which means she was a um, Caribbean mom, which he just had a broader spectrum of a lot of things that he could relate to more than just the ghetto culture. Mm -hmm. And that, that was something that, you know, that was something that I really felt like having a Caribbean mother, but also my Caribbean mother had a very British background. So having having that like expanded your mind and you were you you looked at more things so you had more frames of reference. We already talked about this where on the in the same song he's talking about 
you know, using very specific ghetto slang. Like in another, in the, in the song before, I, I, I was going to pick up on it. He said, done and dunny. Uh, your done is your, is your friend. It's like mm-hmm. one of your best friends. But that's from the Queensbridge area. That's a very specific kind of, like you heard people say that to their friends on the train. You knew, okay, that guy's from Queen, Queensbridge. Oh, okay. If somebody said Mo, if you call your best friend Mo, then you okay, that's a Bronx guy. Hmm. So, like, that's what I'm saying. Like, he had very specific kinds of slangs that only people from the, from the from that time period and region know. In the same song, he's talking about Worf and all the rest of it from Star Trek, which I'm sure goes right over the heads of most of the, like, the inner city guys, but people right. like River and all that yeah. understand. You see mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Yeah. So, so now, he's able like, to appeal to a wider audience. Yeah, he's able to appeal to such a... a, a, a a broader audience and he's able to address multiple groups at the same time and make multiple people go oh shit you know what i'm saying because like now when i hear dunny i'm like oh shit what's up dunn like i remember like everybody used to say like if you listen oh, okay. to mob deep if you if you listen to mob deep to this day like when jay-z was dissing mob deep your peeps ain't long enough your reach ain't strong enough you know your your reach ain't long enough sucker your re- your reach ain't long enough dunny so Jay was using the term Dunny because he was dissing guys from Queensbridge. So he was using their own words against uh, them. You okay. see what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your reach ain't long enough, Dunny. Your peeps ain't strong enough, sucker. So, like, that's what's crazy to me about this dude is he's able to use really, um, you know, regional parochial language. And at the same time, he's able to appeal to Adult Swim and all this other stuff. He's unbelievable. The super flow with more jokes than Bazooka Joe, so we know that is right. The super flow with more jokes than B- Bazooka Joe, you know. No. Bazooka Joe is a is gum. It's a gum. Oh, okay, yeah. But then when you would the little open, cartoon in there. You open up and there'd be a cartoon and be a little joke. So he's got the super flow. Oh, Bazooka Joe! I thought bazooka you said Bazooka Joe. Right there, Bazooka Joe. See that right there? Yep, yeah, Joe. More jokes than Bazooka Joe. Bazooka Joe told the jokes inside there. La ilaha illallah. So Bazooka Joe is a gum. Okay. Yo, I know the bazooka gum right. is... So you, you unwrap it, and there's that little comic strip. That's yeah. the joke. So he's got more jokes than Bazooka Joe. Okay. Okay, we continue. I get it, but I was asking you, or maybe I didn't say it right, but the little cartoon inside was called Bazooka Joe. But I couldn't hear if you were saying Joe or joke. Yeah, yeah the gum is called Bazooka Joe. Yep. Oh and then when you undid the thing and you did the thing, that that's what it was. We should but do an escape room soon. A, a mix between Superfly Snooker and a Super Ho. Chew an MC like El Chupa Nibre. So El Chupa Nibre doesn't mean anything. Chupa means to suck. So I figured it was something bad. Chew an MC like El Chupa Nibre. Digest a group and sell the poop on eBay. Yuck! It's disgusting. So uh, Negative Vibe says Bazooka Joe was the name of the gum. I don't, I don't know. Maybe I'm crazy. Okay. So, digest a group and sell the poop on eBay. So, again, when you eat a rapper, when you eat a rapper, that means you beat him. So, he's saying he's going to not just eat a rapper. He's going to eat a whole crew, right? Mm-hmm. So, digest a group and sell the poop on eBay. Danger with the vest scream and shoot the DJ. Danger Mouse. Because, remember, he's he's collabing with this guy Danger Mouse in the oh, song. Okay, so, that's yeah. why it's Danger Doom. Um, so he's, he's eating these, these rappers and pooping them out and selling them on eBay. Meanwhile, Danger Mouse with the vest is screaming, shoot the DJ. Doom clicking over two chickens three way. So chickens would be two girls and he's Doom. So Doom clicking over two chickens three way. Oh, okay. Right? Cause he's, it's him plus mm-hmm. four, <laughs> four in the five, a cork on the freeway. Villain find a way to make him pay whenever we, whatever we say. State your intentions. I really love your tape, but I hate your inventions. Very well. What do you want, a brownie? He took off the mask and whispers, put me where you found me. He kept his paper digits in a chunk. Once he joined a rap click, midgets into crunk. Okay, so that right there, I don't think he would uh, uh, he would be able to... Um, say today. Say that today. I don't think so. I don't know what he's saying in any of that. I just know that he used a word that we don't use anymore. Yeah, I, I didn't even, you know, like, uh, Beyonce said that she was, like, one of her lyrics, it said spaz out or something like that. Yeah. And she went, all these people went crazy, because apparently, I, I don't know what the condition is, but it's called going spastic. 
So she had to take out the lyrics from the song. It was ridiculous. If I was Beyonce, I'd be like, "Yeah, I'm sorry to, I'm sorry that you felt that way, but I didn't, I didn't mean, I didn't mean that." I yeah. never, I didn't know that. It's an old-fashioned and now offensive name for a person who has cerebral palsy. Cerebral palsy, yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah. So I mean, if it was me, I'd have been like, "Yeah, I'm very sorry, but it is what it is." Um, I feel like not a lot of people would know that. Like, I think everybody understands the word midget and how it's been used. But I feel like spastic. I don't think that. Yeah, but we're not part of that community. You know what I'm saying? So I don't know. I'm not a part of the midget community either. But I know that that is everybody knows that word and everybody knows how that. You know what I'm saying? Like, no, I don't think that everybody knows that. I think I I don't think that everybody knows that. Well, I did have I did know somebody that was in that community. So I guess that would make me. Yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. By extension. You can never you, you can never know. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. Like she says, <laughs> I'm not even gonna repeat that because I, I don't want somebody to dig up something for <laughs> a couple of years and get pony fired from a job. These people are crazy. Um, okay, so uh, it's beef. It's a beef reference to the old crew who's with Monster Island Czars. Ah, okay. So he he was able to just he he's saying he's gonna take care of that whole group by himself. Okay. Uh, once joined the rap click midgets the crunk. He did a solo on the oboe. Could have sold a million. Then the villain went for dolo. Okay, so he did a solo on the oboe. That's an actual instrument. And then it says, I could have sold a million, but the villain went for dolo. Meaning, dolo means by yourself. So, it's just, you replace the S with the D. Yeah. I don't know why. I think solo sounds cool, but yeah. So do I. I could do the shit for dolo. That's what we used to say. I, be, basically, you could take it on by yourself. Okay. Right? So, like, usually, like, if there was a fight, like... Nine times out of ten, New Yorkers don't believe in fair fighting. So, really? yeah. So, like, if you're starting to lose, your man will be like, yo. And if you say, nah, I got this dolo, then your man will stay out of it. If you don't say anything, then he'll jump in and, and, and uh, help okay. you fight the other guy. He'll be like, yo, you need help? You need help? He'll be like, nah, I got this dolo. Okay. So, what he's saying is, I guess he was in a group. And then he could have sold a million with the group, but the villain went for dolo. He did it by himself and cited creative differences. Wow. Basically, they hated. He oh. left no jaded witnesses. Rappers suck. When they spit, I doubt him. They crap this thing about you want to slap the fucking shit out of him. So it looks like he's he's a little salty at his old crew, yeah, or or people, and he's taking shots at them because he went off by himself. Which, I mean, it's the whole Justin Timberlake, Michael Jackson, Beyonce thing. Like some of the sometimes yeah. the guys are just bigger than the group. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes the guy sometimes the guy's just bigger than the group, and obviously he made the right decision. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know the ins and outs of this whole situation, but that happens. That happened with Busta Rhymes. Uh, that happened a little bit with Big, with the Junior Mafia, a little bit. Like, you know, you, you have this one person who's also dedicated to working really hard. That's the other thing. Like, people don't realize about music. It's hard work. So you got one person that's, like, mega dedicated, and then you had other people that are just like, oh, let's just be in a crew. and But you're yeah. holding this other guy back. Yeah. So he's like, man, fuck it. So... Some uh, Ice Cube, yeah, Ice Cube is probably Ice Cube is probably the biggest example of that, where he was in N.W.A. and a lot of people think that Easy E is a good rapper. No disrespect, but Ice was writing all the Easy E shit, all of it. <laughs> That's why when after No Vaseline, if you listen to Easy E's records, they don't sound the same because they had Snoop writing, writing for Easy wow. after that instead of Ice Cube. And Snoop is a great rapper, but he's he's lyrically. He can't. Nobody can fuck with Ice Cube from the West Coast, in my opinion. Okay. In my opinion, uh, other than Cool G rap, but in my opinion, Ice Cube is like one of the best. I don't know. Ice Cube to me is a top ten rapper. But this guy right here, um, now I'm looking at this. I'm looking at this particular song. Now I realize why that guy said he would take him in a rap battle over Little Wayne, because. He seems like if he really wants to get disrespectful, he could like intelligently disrespect you on so many levels. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like a strict baritarian, a sick pair of merrymen. So a bear, you know, like a vegetarian. Yeah. He's a baritarian. Like bear, all he eats mm-hmm. is all he drinks yeah. is bear. A sick oh, pair, beer. A strict baritarian. Like he just made up his own word, and as soon as you say it, you know exactly what he means. Holy shit, baritarian. Oh, I get it. You're not a vegetarian. You're a baritarian. Where? A sick, it, it, yeah, just go down here. No prick barbarian. A strict baritarian. A sick pair of merrymen. 
The beat is like a swift kick in the rear end. So, like, again, like, he, he's mm -hmm. got that signature style where he can make every word rap. But I really like that line, a strict baritarian, a sick pair of merry men, because it's him and uh, Danger Mouse yeah. would be the sick pair of merry men. Okay, okay. The yeah. beat is swift like a kick in the rear end. The stiff dick made her lose her lipstick and hairpin. <laughs> he said, oh, man, he said, damn, act like you know me. Even when the mask's on, show me what you owe me. Um, that little rhyme scheme right there was pretty cool because it reminded me of Big in, uh, in Hypnotize. Because Biggie says, make the holes take their clothes off slowly. Dealing with a force like Bobby Dick Black, like Kobe. Watch me roam like Romy. Lucky you don't own me. Where the safe show me, homie. So, like, when he was rapping on this part, uh, he said, damn, act like you know me. Even with the mask on, show me what you owe me. Like, he was oh, saying I it. See. He was saying it like Big was saying it mm -hmm. back then, too. Um, his brother died, and that killed the group in 93. Damn, oh, yeah, I did, I did hear about it. He went through some tragedy. His brother died, and his son died, I think, in 2017. There's actually some speculation that he actually took his own life because of his son. I'm not sure about that, but anyway. Uh, okay, this this song I really liked. I like better than the other one. The other one got a 9.3. I'm going to give this one a 9.4. Mm. Yes, point one. and as as negative vibes was pointed out, as Jay's pointed out, it happened with Eminem no. as well. Uh, Eminem what? was in this group D12, and like, yeah, we're brothers, blah blah blah. And then Dr. Dre heard Eminem's thing, and he's like, I don't, I don't care about D12, I care about you. So Eminem blew up, and about two or three records in, then Eminem brought up his crew. Then oh, they he brought did? up D12. Yeah, he yeah he came back and got him. Um, That's cool. It's very rare that the group starts together and like makes it together. Like one of them is usually the standout star. And Dr. Dre did the right thing, and so did Eminem. If Eminem was gonna do some dumb shit, like no, I'm gonna stay loyal to D12, and no, no, ridiculous. Go out there, mm -hmm. get huge, and then you can bring up anybody you want. And that's mm -hmm. that's in my opinion the way to do it. Ice Cube was different because they were an established group, but then he was getting G'd out of his money. All of them were getting G'd out of their money, and Easy E wouldn't. You know, he wouldn't budge on the contract because of their manager. That's a different story. And so that's how Ice Cube broke off. But a, a, a lot of guys, a lot of guys have a problem with that. But I don't have a problem with that because it's like one of you, you know, you're basically riding the coattails of this person. Like, mm -hmm. I don't think, you know, Beyonce has so much charisma. I don't think that they would have been a big, there was, there were, there were a bunch of groups like Destiny. They were a dime a dozen. There was nothing special about them like vocally or anything like mm -hmm. that it was just beyonce was so charismatic yeah. that they just shot up yeah and like people i remember because i was like into latina girls at the time but i remember everybody making a big deal about beyonce like how beautiful she was I'm like yo she's not that pretty like you know what i'm saying like i was like but, but like it, she had this aura about her mm -hmm. it was people were not attracted see i think like people are so basic that they just think that oh if you're attracted to a woman you're attracted to her sexuality i don't think people are attracted to beyonce's sexuality i think they're attracted to her charisma I think she's very charismatic. I don't look at her as a very sexual person. Like, she doesn't come off as, like, a very sexual being to me. She comes off as more what? of, like, a charismatic sort of, like, almost semi-divine type of, like, godlike person. And I think that that's what people are attracted to. I don't think people are and attracted to her sexuality. And you're saying that they sexualize it? Yeah, I think people think that they just assume that because you're drawn to a person, especially if male to female, if you're drawn to a person, that it's because... You know of your sexuality when in reality there's a lot of gay dudes this is gay dudes that love her you know the whole beehive and all that it's mostly gay dudes that are in the beehive whatever that is like are they attracted to her sexuality you see what i'm saying like with this mf doom guy i think he's like the perfect example of that <laughs> mf doom like you're drawn to his charisma you're not drawn to, to his clothes you're not drawn the man has a certain kind of charisma even when he raps that he just has a style and an attitude that most people don't have. Like, I was listening to an interview of him because, like I said, I was doing some research before we did the, the stream because I didn't know anything about this dude. And he was talking about how one of the reasons he wore the mask was because he wanted to be an everyman. He wanted to be like, yo, when I talk about stuff, yeah. I want you to feel like like yeah. there's your friend or something that's, like, talking to you. Yeah. Like, we're sitting there, you know, splitting a blunt together or whatever and just talking about shit. Like, he wanted to have that effect, and he realized that if he put his actual face out there and, 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 you know, whatever, then he's no longer an everyman because now he has a certain look 
So now you know it's not the guy sitting next to you on the train. Mm-hmm. Like, I remember there were some times as a young kid on the train, sometimes you'd sit down and, like, an OG would, would sit next to you or sit by you or whatever, and they would just start dropping wisdom on you. They'd be like, yo, young blood, blah, blah, blah. Even if you weren't part of Blood Gang, you'd be like, yo, blood, blah, blah, blah. And they would, like, drop, like, serious knowledge on you. Like, it would be, like, a cool... Really? So I, That's cool. I feel like he had that kind of vibe with people, like... The stranger who will sit and talk with you and is a cool yeah. dude and you're there and then you're gone. Like, I think the mask the mask kind of promotes that that kind of that kind of feeling because I feel that way yeah. about the guy. Like I purposely like was looking away when they were showing his real face and I purposely haven't oh, really? googled him. Yeah, like so I don't really know what his actual Wait, real you, face looks really? like. Really? I don't. I and and when they were they were showing like you know, early days are like, I quickly looked away. Because I do appreciate that about him. And it does, like, enhance the feeling to me when I'm listening to this music. Really? Like, I'm li- he, he does, like, strike me as, like, That's one of those so guys funny. that will sit by you. On- it's like when I'm watching a movie and I don't want to hear, like, the main characters in the I real know, world. I, I don't want to hear them do interviews. I, don't wanna- I know. We I are only want to see the them same. that way. We are not the same. Yeah, like, Offred, they had Offred in there, like, giving some interview. I'm like, yo, I don't want to see you as no real person, bro. I want to see, like, you as Offred. That's who you're going to be for so the rest of your crazy. life to be. But That's anyway, so crazy. That's... this is a very long review. Holy shit. Um, I'm not like that. I'm like, when I finish a show, I'm bummed out that the show is done. And so I want to see all the other stuff about them so I can be like, oh, okay, the show, that's that's not real life for those people. Like, this is who they really are. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. But we are not the same on that. <laughs> all right. Um, uh, uh, nine this, three. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually giving this an 8.9. Okay. It was not, yeah. Okay. There you are, dear listener. A couple more songs on the way. We shall return. I know that review is a little long. Sorry, guys. It is what it is. Vin out. Sorry, out. Go!